بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد the 26th chapter الشعراء الشعراء 227 آيات and the meaning الشعراء is the plural of شاعر which is a poet a poet of somebody who makes poetry says poetry the reason why it's named الشعراء the poets uh, we're told لم يذكر لفظ الشعراء إلا في هذه الصورة فسميت بهم that this is the only place in the Quran that the word شعراء poets is mentioned and because of that uniqueness Allah Ta'ala chose to <coughs> name it after them as far as its names is concerned it is known by more than just the name of الشعراء it is also known as Surah Ta Seen Meem الشعراء as well as الجامعة Al Jamia, the gathering or the the the, the gatherer, the the collector. Um, its general objective is bayan wa fasahat al Quran al Karim wa ijazi. It is to show and to demonstrate the eloquence, the literary excellence of the Quran, as well as its miraculousness. Wa tanzihuhu an durubi shi'ri. And it is also to make it explicitly clear that it is not poetry, prose, or anything that is of human kind. It is Allah Ta'ala's speech. It is absolutely unique in that sense. The reason for its revelation is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a Meccan chapter. And we don't have anything that is for the chapter as a whole or any of its verses that is authentic as to why it was revealed. Fadluha, we don't have anything that tells us about its merits and virtues except that it is from the Mi'in, that it is from those chapters that have more than a hundred verses. And we see that it's actually more than 200 verses, subhanAllah. The relationship between the beginning and the end of the chapter we're told it is عن بيان القرآن الكريم It is all about the Qur'an Explaining the, the Qur'an, expressing the Qur'an the, the, the Adding clarity to what the Qur'an is So Allah Ta'ala begins the chapter saying تلك آيات الكتاب المبين Those are the verses of the book which are a clarifier, which are clear so the Qur'an is being described as mubin, as that which is in and of itself clear, which makes other things clear. And he concludes saying, بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍ مُبِينٍ In the Arabic tongue, which is clear, in and of itself clear, and it also clarifies that the Qur'an is in the Arabic language. This is why we say that the Qur'an is only in the Arabic. We don't consider the translation regardless, regardless of the language as being the literal word of Allah Ta'ala, the Qur'an, it is only in the Arabic that we say it is the literal word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that it is the Qur'an. Otherwise in English, Turkish, Urdu, Persian, Spanish, makes no difference. All of that are translations, translations. Well, what about the relationship between Ash-Shu'ara and Al-Furqan? We're told, لَمَّا ذَكَرَ سُبْحَانَهُ كَذِبَ الْكَافِرِينَ فِي خِتَامِ الْفُرْقَانِ بِقَوْلِهِ فَقَدْ كَذَّبْتُمْ فَسَوْفَ يَكُونُ لِزَامًا That Allah Ta'ala concluded Al-Furqan mentioning that the disbelievers are rejecting and they are denying what Allah Ta'ala had given of guidance, His messengers, His revelation, saying, you have certainly falsified, rejected, believed, and therefore the effects, the consequences of that are going to be effective upon you. Karrara dhikra kadhibihim fiftitahi shu'ara faqal That Allah Ta'ala continues in this chapter focusing on the denial of the disbelievers and their falsification of what Allah Ta'ala has truly given of guidance, saying, فَقَدْ كَذَّبُوا فَسَيَأْتِيهِمْ أَنْبَاءُ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ They have certainly lied, they have falsified what has come to them, claiming that it's not real, it's not from Allah, it's, it's, they're fake, they're not real prophets, and so on and so forth. 
And therefore Allah Ta'ala says, and there will certainly come to them the news for that which they themselves have been mocking and what they have been sarcastic towards and what they have been ridiculing. So concluding the previous chapter with regards to focusing on the disbelievers, continuing in this chapter with regards to them. And so subhanAllah we see that it is a continuation that Allah Ta'ala addresses the disbelievers, addressing them so that they will be guided, that they will recognize that Allah's arguments are true and whatever they have of excuses are false. That Allah Ta'ala is addressing them so that they will still have the opportunity to repent and that they do not die as renegades. But ultimately Allah Rabbul Alameen leaves that choice for each individual and this is why the whole premise of reward and punishment are there for those who of their own accord believe and live righteously that Allah Ta'ala will save them from being punished and He will bless them with paradise in the hereafter. But for those who choose to be renegades and continuously rebel against Allah Rabbul Alameen or to flat out declare that there is no God as atheists etc. that they will also then have to bear the consequences for their beliefs and for their actions. And we pray that Allah Rabbul Alameen forever and always keep us guided in our progeny until the Day of Judgment and bless us to be sources of guidance for others. Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad.